Now that we know how to create 3D objects, let's learn how to take away some of that object. So what I mean by that is let's learn how to cut them up a bit. Adds a lot more variety. What I'm talking about are these features here. Extrude cut, revolved cut, swept cut, and loft cut. We'll save the other cuts for another time. I'll go ahead and pan this around a bit. You also have this file for yourself. If you go to the project files under 3D cuts, you can go ahead and open this. So I'll go ahead and select extrude cut. I have these same two options that you may have noticed from previous extrudes that we've been looking at. So what I'm going to do is choose number two, an existing sketch to use for the feature. I'll go ahead and expand this tree here. It's a lot better to choose from the tree here than from the actual object. And what I want to expand is this rectangle part here. So as you can see, it's kind of difficult to get all four corners. So I'll go ahead and look for that. It's going to be the bottom here. I'll go ahead and select that feature. As you can see, I get a yellow box, which is going to be the portion that's going to be cut out. I could grab this 3D handle and pull it all the way out and shrink it all the way back in. I'll go ahead and leave it there for now. So you can see it's a little bit on the other side. Now let's look at some of the options that we have on the left hand side. We can start where we're going to actually do the cut from, which currently we have it as sketch plane. We could start it from another face or surface, a vertex or an offset. Currently we want to keep it at the sketch plane, the plane that is on the bottom here. We have direction one and direction two, just like we have with a lot of the extrudes. We can cut towards that direction and cut towards the other direction as well if we needed to. I'll go ahead and take off that direction too. We could choose this icon here to flip the direction we want to actually cut through. I'll go ahead and pull this back in again. See how much we're actually cutting in. That looks kind of decent right there. We're not trying to make any exact cuts right now so this 3D feature is pretty useful for now. We can also choose various other options, a thin feature kind of cut, which would just go around the side portion here. But for now, we'll go ahead and keep just the thin cut here, well, the non-thin cut, and we'll cut just the normal portion that we're using right here. We'll go ahead and accept this, and we'll keep blind. Remember, we also have various other options here, just like before. We can cut through the whole object up to another object, a vertex, a surface, we can cut all the way up to the object, but offset it a little bit from that surface, and as well as up to a body and midplane. But we're going to keep blind and specify a distance here. And we're going to go ahead and accept what we have. As you can see, it went ahead and cut in the surface here, just slightly. The next cut we'll look at is revolved cut. We're going to revolve a cut around this, so let's go ahead and activate that. And just like before, we have to select the sketch. I'm going to go ahead and choose this here, this side cut. Now what this needs is an actual closed path and just an axis to revolve around, just like if we were going to do a revolved boss base. And now I need to choose the axis of rotation. I'll go ahead and choose that axis like so. As you can see, it's already giving me a preview of what it's going to look like. We can adjust the angle degrees. We can rotate it the opposite direction. You can't really, well, let me change it to 90. And we can choose which direction we're going to cut that out. We want to go all the way around, so I'll leave it at 360. Again, we have various options to choose where it extends all the way out in the cut. We can do a thin feature as well as direction 2 like before. But we're going to keep it just like this. I'll go ahead and accept. And it went ahead and cut off a portion of that feature there. Now it looks almost like like a suction cup kind of thing. These are just random shapes that we created for this just to see how it looks. Next, let's go ahead and try and do this loft cut here. Now, just like the loft before, this is going to require two planes, one over here and one over here, that we're going to connect the two surfaces or the profiles that we're creating. So I'll go ahead and start with this rectangular surface here. And then I also have this one over here, which is going to be this circle. In the tree as you can see it's cutting through my object i can also provide a guide curve if i needed to we have a curve right here this spline if i go ahead and select that you can see it changes the way the loft cut goes through the object i'll go ahead and accept that but before we do that we also have these other options here which we'll cover a little little bit more in a later tutorial as we actually have a better need for them 
for now we're just taking a look at them I'm gonna go ahead and actually cancel this out because what I want to do is also show you another feature as well if we didn't like that loft cut that we did with the guide curve we could go ahead and do a swept cut now what we need here is we need an actual we can do a solid or a profile sweep which we're gonna choose the profile as you can see the icon here and the icon here first we need to choose what we're gonna send through we're gonna send this circle through right here and what's the path that we're gonna send it along we could go ahead and choose this path here they don't actually need to be connected as you can see we have other various options through here which we may need to use for this one here because it's I don't believe it's gonna cut all the way through but let's go ahead and accept that and as you can see it didn't exactly cut through in this end over here but it did cut over here and if I hold over it it can kinda of see the surface in the inside I can also choose this section view here and change the plane that we're actually sectioning to look at it go ahead and drag this back and forth and you can see the cut as it goes through follows that spline I'll go ahead and close that out so as you can see once we've created our base geometry which we just had a cylinder looking here and a simple rectangle little piece of metal or whatever material this may be adding a lot of cuts can really refine your geometry